Now certainly Allah commands you to be just. So justice was the first command of the three things which were commanded. And verse 91 now, Allah tells us of something which we should try to be just with as well should be our word. What we say, what we give people, our promises. So this is also something because sometimes when we think about justice, we think about money and we think about <coughs> not being harsh to someone but justice is also with regards to our words that we speak, that we say. So verse 91, we look at the translation. Honor Allah's covenant when you make a pledge. وَلَا تَنْقُضُ الْأَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيلِهَا And do not break your oaths after confirming them. وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَفِيلًا Having made Allah your guarantor, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ Certainly Allah knows what you do. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us وَأَوْفُوا بِأَهْدِ اللَّهِ So the first word is a command, the pattern of the word أَوْفُوا comes from the word wafa, which means to fulfill so by using the word awfu, Allah is commanding you to fulfill. In the first ayat in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, awfu bil ukur. Allah says, O you who believe, fulfill your promises. Fulfill your agreements. So here Allah is commanding. The command is, Wa awfu bi ahdillahi idha ahadtu. That is, fulfill the covenant of Allah which you made with Allah. <clears throat> the covenant that you made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfill that. So now there, it tells us that there are different types of pledges, there are different types of covenant that we make. And one of the covenants, the most sacred covenants that we as human beings made, with Allah is the covenant that we took in the world of the souls. And right now, no one of us could remember that time when all of us was present in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though we were small, we had full shape. The same hands, same feet, same features that we have now, but just tiny. Now we go to a movie called Honey, I shrunk the kid. That they become tiny. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. He just wiped the back of Adam alayhi salam. And everyone came out from that, from the beginning with Adam alayhi salam, all his children, until the day of judgment. So all of us were there. And Allah says, Allah stupid rabbikum, I may not your Lord. And with one voice, everyone say, Call of Bala, definitely you Allah. We have no doubt that you are our God. So this was a covenant we took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now as we come into the dunya, many people they forget. Not only as I can say, many people, but all of us, we forget that incident. And we were born to different parents and then our parents now drew us to different directions. So for example, you are born into a Christian home, the parents are going to lead you towards that religion. You are born into a Hindu home, they are going to lead you to that, that way of life. And then as you are born into a Muslim home, then you get that. It is only after a period of time, as you start to look around, and you try to seek for yourself because that natural way of life, that fitrah, there is something natural Allah has placed in us. <clears throat> that is something that is going to remain with us. So as long as we open our eyes, even though we have parents who are not Muslims, as long as we try to open our eyes, we are going to find the truth. The truth is not hidden. The truth is there in the open. 
but it's for us to open our eyes and that is why so many times you see people revert back to Islam after growing up their entire life in a particular religion as they open their eyes and they realize what is the truth they will come to Islam and they will accept the truth because that is the natural way so we all took that covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dear but after that there are other covenants as well as Muslims as we as Muslims we have accepted Allah as our creator because we say we follow Islam and if we say we follow Islam our belief is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah now by believing that there is no God but Allah which means you accept all of Allah's commands so when you do not fulfill Allah's com commands then you are not fulfilling the covenant you took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ayah before, three commands Ar al ihsan and itai al qurba now as I mentioned <coughs> Allah is saying that you have a covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of us have that covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we have to fulfill that covenant so awfu bi ahdillahi idha ahadtum when you make that oath, that covenant with Allah وَلَا تَنْقُضُ الْأَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيرِهَا And Allah, He says, do not break the pledges you make. Do not break your oath after conforming it. Do not break your oath after conforming it. So when you make an oath, you should try your utmost to hold on to that. To try your best to fulfill it. Now there are certain situations where you make an oath and afterwards you realize, you know what, you cannot, it is not in your means to really fulfill that. It's just natural as well. As human, at that point of time, you felt, you know what, I could, I could fulfill this. But as time passes, that situation changes around. We do not know what tomorrow holds. We do not know what next week holds. But what we have today, we feel to ourselves, you know what, I could fulfill it. But then when next week we should realize, you know what, I really can't fulfill it, even though I want to. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, He says, وَلَا تَجْعَلُ اللَّهَ قُرْدَةً لِأَيْمَانِكُمْ Do not, لَا تَجْعَلُ اللَّهَ قُرْدَةً لِأَيْمَانِكُمْ Do not make Allah an excuse for your oaths. Do not make Allah an excuse for your oath. Next he says, ذَلِكَ كَفَّارُتَ عَيْمَانِكُمْ إِذَا حَلَفْتُمْ Allah says, that is the expiation of your oath whenever you make an oath. So which means Allah is telling you that sometimes you are going to break your oath. And if you are going to break your oath, you don't just get away just like that. Even though you know you do not know what is going to happen in the future. When it do happen in the future and you cannot fulfill your oaths, Allah is saying, then you have an expiation to do. You have a kafara to fulfill. So Allah says, ذَلِكَ كَفَارَةٌ So we see, in this ayat Allah is saying, لَا تَنْقُدُ الْأَيْمَانِ Don't break your oaths. Right, so someone might look at this ayat and say, Lord, Allah is saying we can't break our oath at all. We cannot do that. If we do that, it's a major crime. Something if we go to be thrown in the fire of Jahannam if we break our oath. And this is why Allah tells us in the next ayat, and another ayat of the Quran, He says, Dalika kafaratan There is an expiation. So if there is an expiation, which means that in certain circumstances, you might have to break your oath. So if you do break your oath, then just fulfill the kafara, fulfill the expiation. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "Inni wallahi, insha Allah la ahlif ala yaminin." He says, "I swear by Allah, if Allah wills, I would not break my oath." This is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says, "If Allah wills, then." I will try my best not to break my oath. But he says, 
says, if I see that other than my oath, there's goodness in it, then I prefer to do what is better than to still keep that oath. Again, I prefer to do what is better than to keep that oath. But I would like not to break it, but if there's something better than that, I prefer to do that which is better and then do the kafara. So for example, you are sick. And many times we, we make a lot of oaths when we are sick. Because we want shifa, we want cure. So we swear and we, we make all agreements with Allah when we are lying down there. And sometimes we say, oh Allah, if you, if you allow me to get back health, or if you allow me to be discharged from this hospital, seven days after I'm going to fast for you. I'm going to do a fast for you, an optional fast for you, if you, whenever you discharge me from the hospital. And now, when you're discharged from the hospital, seven days after is the day of Eid. <laughs> you can't fast on the day of Eid, but you make an oath there, but you didn't know that the day of Eid would have fallen on the seventh day that you said. So you can't say, make it an excuse and say, I still have to fast because Allah said, don't break my oath. No. Here's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying. If there's goodness and other than the oath, then forget about your oath. Break the oath so you don't fast on the day of Eid. You can fast any other day, but do the kafara for that. So that is one example. Another example, sometimes you make an oath and say, not we... I don't want no dealings with this brother of mine, or this sister of mine. Remember, with, with families, you have a lot of bickering, and, and then you, you come and say, not me, I'm done with them. I swear by Allah, me talking back to my sister, me talking back to my bro brother. I don't want them back by my house again. But that is not something good. But you made an oath. You swear by Allah, I don't want my own blood brother, my siblings back by my home. So the Prophet says, you try to keep it, but then there's something better, which is keeping your family ties together. So you should not hold on on that oath. You should break it, allow them to come back and do kafar. So this is what Allah said, Do not break your oath after it has been confirmed. وَقَدْ جَعَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَفِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says because when you make an oath you are placing Allah as your guarantor because you're using Allah's name you're saying I swear by Allah so what you're doing there you're putting Allah's name as your guarantor and if you have Allah as your guarantor you have to try your best to fulfill that because it is you who have put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your guarantor Allah says, Inna Allah ya'alu ma taf'alun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what you do. The word ahad refers to all types of transactions, all types of facts, all types of pledges. According to most of the scholars, to break your oath is considered to be a major sin. So, as much as possible as you could upkeep it, you should try your best to upkeep it, to fulfill it. There's only, as I mentioned, only in certain circumstances you realize that there's better only then you break it, and even when you break it, you make sure you do your kafara. As for who this ayat is addressing, it is mentioned it is general for everyone because the Quran is general. But at that time, was it was being revealed, Allah, it is mentioned that Allah was addressing the Ahlul Kitab. The Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christians. Because as Allah says, don't break your oath after you have conformed it. Now they, the Christians, the Jews and the Christians, they had made an oath that as long as I'm alive, 
and the last prophet come, I am going to follow him. That was their oath. That was the pledge they made. As long as Muhammad, not Muhammad, as long as the last prophet they was expecting it to come from amongst their people. And that is why many of them settled in Medina. Sell out what they had, different places. Because they knew that the last prophet is not going to come from Jerusalem. It is going to come in Medina. But while settling there, one of their expectations is that someone from our progeny now is going to born in Medina to be the prophet. So now that they were expecting that an Arab it is going to come from amongst the, the idol worshippers, one of the main things is, let us go and a good few of us settle there, and Allah might choose one of our descendants that is in Medina from the, the, from the Bani Israel. And Allah is going to appoint him as the prophet, and we are going to follow. And this is why, while they were in Medina, they were a minority. They were a minority. So many times the Arabs used to take advantage of them because those that are the worshippers, they were the strongest. They had all the bigger tribes. So anytime there was any little fighting, they would always lose. The Christian, the Ahlul Kitab would always lose. And they would say, you know what, if, when, sorry, when the last prophet comes, we are going to follow him and then we are going to be victorious against you. But when he did come, what happened? They broke their pledge. So one is, they made that pledge, وَأَوْفُوا بِأَهْدِ اللَّهِ إِذَا أَحَدْتُمْ Allah says, fulfill the pledge you made, the Jews and the Christians. وَلَا تَنْكُدَ الْأَيْمَانَ بَعْدَ تَوْكِيرِهَا And don't break the oath after it has been confirmed. So don't break it now that you see him all the time you're waiting on him. Now you see him just because you don't like him. You're going to break your oath. Allah said, no, don't do that. Kaja, because you have placed Allah as a guarantor over you. So <clears throat> even though it is general, as I said, the ayat is general for everyone, for us as well in our time, but it was addressing the but the, the Ahlul Kitab who was settling there in Medina. The Prophet wasalam, he did what we call different bay'ah, the oath of allegiance, that people would come to the Prophet wasalam, and accept Islam. And when they accept Islam, he would hold their hands and he would make them make a pledge. There were different pledges. And one of the, the pledge will, will, will entail fulfilling the commands of Allah. That is making sure you pray your salat, you fast, you give your zakat. That was the pledge. Do not turn away from Islam. So this was the, the pledge that he had made with many of them. So Allah is in, fulfill that pledge. So all the new Muslims that came now and made that pledge with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah said, fulfill it. And do not break it because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he with his companions, many a times they were fewer than the Mushrikeen. And now when you see you are in the minority and there is a majority, many times you want to, to jump ship and go over on the other side because you feel to yourself the numbers are better on that side the better thing for me to do is go on that side Allah says La al -aymana ba la you already made this pledge with the Prophet that whatever hardship comes your way you have to stay with it because you made that pledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Allah yaf'alu ma ta'am in Allah ya'lamu ma taf'alun certainly Allah he knows what you do the next ayat Allah gives us an example of the same thing of breaking your oath 
Allah says, "Wala takunu kaladi nafadat ghazlaha min ba'di kuwatin ankaba." Do not be like the woman who foolishly unravels her yarn after it is firmly spun. Tatakhiduna aymana kum dakhalam baina kum an takuna ummatan hiya arba min umma. Innama yablu kum Allah bihi wa ribayinan lakum yaum al kiyamati ma kuntum fihi takhtarikun. Allah says, by taking your oath as a means of deceiving one another in favor of a stronger group. Surely Allah tests you through this and on the day of judgment he will certainly make your differences clear to you. So Allah gives it an example. Do not be la takonu kallati naqadal ghazlaha ghazlaha min ba'di kuwatin ankata. Do not be like the woman who foolishly unravels her yarn after it is formally spun. After she took her time and spun that yarn, soon as it is completed, unravels it. It is mentioned that there was a woman in Makkah who used to do that, take all her time and then when she finished, she released it. You know, some people have these puzzles and some of them are thousand bees. And they take their time, sometimes two, three days, trying to fix that puzzle. As soon as they fix, scramble it and start again. Allah says, don't be that foolish, that foolish lady, sprung and doing all of that, putting in that, all that effort, and as soon it un she starts to unravel it. The understanding of this, is that, the, as I mentioned, it is referring to the Ahlul Kitab. They were putting everything in place. Putting everything in place. And then now, as they see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they start to unravel it. Start to let go of everything that was given to them. So even though it was already completed, all they had to do now, all the preparations were finished, completed. All they had to do now was say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Everything was there already. Because they already believe in malaikas. They already believe in prophets. They already believe in books. They already believe in life after death. So their kind of akira was very, very close to Islam, more than the people of Makkah. And yet, when the Prophet Sallallahu come, instead of just completing it out, they start to lose it. This is the parable Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given, which tells us as well, when we make an agreement, we do everything, we sit down with someone and we do out an agreement, you spend time to do that agreement, you should not, sooner when it finish, go back on your words. Do not be that foolish person. You, you sit, you read everything with this agreement. Before you sign, as long as you sign it, don't break it. So this is also <clears throat> with regards to this individual. Allah then says, تَتَّخِذُونَ أَيْمَانَكُمْ دَخْلًا بَيْنَكُمْ أَنْ تَكُونَ أُمَّةً هِيَ أَرْبَى مِنْ أُمَّةً That they are taken, you are taken, their Ayman, their oaths, their pledges as a form of deceive, a form of deception amongst you. So that one group will be stronger than the other group. What they will do is they will come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they will make a pledge with him. This is Ahlul Kitab in Surah Ali Imran Allah mentions this even clearer that they had this plan amongst themselves that what we're going to do is go in the morning and accept Islam and then spend the whole and entire day as Muslims and in the evening now we're going to say this is not the true religion nothing is nice in this religion and we're going to go back, apostate, go back to our previous religion. So, Allah is saying, these people, 
they were taken oath and then they were just make it look, try to deceive people to, to feel that you know what, this is good and then they will go on to the other group because the other group is larger or stronger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not do that with your oaths, with your pledge. Do not use your pledge to deceive. Allah says, Innama yablukum Allahu bihi. Certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you with it. Allah is testing you with it. So when you when you are making your oaths, when you're making your pledge, when you're making a covenant, when you're making a promise, simple thing as a promise, when you are making a promise to someone, all of that is very simple to do with the tongue. It just comes out very easy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it could be a means of deception. And as it be a means of deception, then you are throwing yourself in to falsehood, into battle, throwing yourself into the law, into misguidance. So Allah says, Allah has used the pledges, your promises, your agreements. Allah has used it as a form of testing you. Testing you. And many times you see, you see that with, with people. You make an agreement with someone and then after a few days you, you start to change your mind. Many times people will call and say they want to see a car, a car on sale. They'll come and they'll watch it. They say, yes, this is a nice car. I'm coming back for this. Keep it for murder. Don't give it to nobody else. Anybody else come to you, tell them it's taken already. Don't give it up to nobody else. You never see back that man. God disappear. You could wait a whole week, you still are seeing him. And it, it becomes so normal now that you expect it. As soon as they say that, you just expect. You already know that they're not serious. So even though they give you the word, you know that this is a form of deception. They just pull in a thing with you. So Allah is telling us, don't fall for that. Allah is testing you. Wali yubayyinana lakum yawm al kiyama ma kuntum fi taqtalifun. Allah says on the day of judgment, Allah is going to make it clear to you with what you are differing in. On the day of judgment, as I said, it refers to Ahlul Kitab, all the iktilaf, all the differences that the Jews and the Christians have, Allah says Allah is going to make it clear for them on the Day of Judgment. Whatever issues we had with our agreements as well, with our pledges, our covenant that we took, Allah is going to show us it on the Day of Judgment. So don't think that no one is seeing. Sometimes we do things, sometimes we say things, and we say, no, they don't have proof for what we say. There's not a, a written agreement and we find a lot of people like that, if you don't write it, they, they try to deny it when they don't want to fulfill it. But Allah is saying on the day of judgment, everything is going to be clear. So if they try to fool you here, they can't fool you on that side. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make it clear. In verse 93 now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَكِنْ يُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَلَتُسْأَلُنَّ عَمَّا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبَلُونَ Allah says, had Allah willed, He could have easily made you one community of believers. But He leaves to stray whoever He wills and guides whoever He wills. And you will certainly be questioned about what you used to do. <clears throat> Many times people ask this question, if religion was true, if God was real, then why are there so many different religions? Why does he just can't make one religion? Why have to have Christianity? Why have to have Hinduism? Why have to have Judaism? 
Why you have to have Islam as a separate thing? Why you couldn't just have one religion? If there's one God, everybody claims there's one God, then why are there so many different religions? Why didn't he just guide everyone to that one religion? Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Allah says, if Allah wanted, Allah could have done that. It's not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have the power to do that. Allah could have done that. Allah could have made everyone Muslims. As soon as you think about battle, you think about going down the wrong path, Allah could have changed your mind and inspired you to know that, hey, this is wrong, come back on the straight path. Allah could have done that. Allah says Allah has the power to do that. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَعَلَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا if Allah wanted, Allah could have made all of you into one. In another ayat, Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا Allah says, if your Lord wanted, He could have made every single one on the face of the earth believers. Allah has the power to do that. Alright, now Allah can do that. Allah can make every single one Muslim. So much so that they will have no disagreements. Allah can remove all the disagreements. Allah can remove all the hatred. Allah can remove all the enmity that we have and make us all just love one another and be on the street. But Allah says He could do that. But if He do something like that, then Allah is breaking His word. If He does that, He is breaking His own oath now. The ayah before Allah tells you, don't break your oath. And if Allah was to do that, then Allah is breaking His oath. And what is His oath? Allah says, He has created life and death to test you to see which one of you is best indeed to test you now if Allah is guiding you guiding everyone to the straight path that is no test that is no test Allah also gave his word to shaitan when shaitan asks for respite Allah says yes I am giving you respite until the day of judgment do what you want with them Try to misguide them. Now if Allah grants respite to shaitan, and then Allah equipped us in such a way that whatever shaitan do is like nothing. Then Allah is breaking his word he gives to shaitan as well. So Allah is breaking his word that he gives to us, that he's going to test us to see which one of us, and he's breaking his word against shaitan. And Allah wouldn't do that. Allah has created us, placed us, granted us a free choice that we could choose for ourselves. And as long as you have a free choice, He can't guide everyone. Because as long as He guides everyone, He's taken away that free choice. You're becoming now like how the angels are, if He was to guide everyone. So everyone will be going to Jannah. Nobody will be going to Jahannam now. Because he has took away the free choice. And Allah is not going to do that. Because again, if Allah take away our free choice and we can choose what we want, then Allah is going against his words again. So Allah is showing you, Allah is not going to go against his word. Just as how Allah is encouraging us to keep our word, Allah is going to keep His word. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in another ayat, He says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا If your Lord wanted, He could have made, the, he could have made mankind into one nation. وَلَا يَزَلُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ But He says mankind have this attitude, this nature of always having differences. And how do they get that differences? Because they have a free choice. 
Allah has given them an apple which he did not give to the other creations. So Allah has given them that and as long as they have that, that apple, that freedom of choice, they are going to use it and try to, to differ. And shaitan is going to use that as well to instill things in them so that they will start to think around the, the other way and start to follow different religions. So Allah says it is not that Allah cannot do that. So when people bring that question, why Allah don't do that? Allah has already promised you, giving you a free choice. The only way Allah could do that now is taking away that free choice from you. Breaking His promises, breaking His covenant that He had made with us as mankind. So Allah says, يُدِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاء وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاء Allah says, He allows to go astray whoever He wants. يُدِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاء so whoever wants to follow any other God, Allah allows them, go ahead. Allah is not going to turn them out, even though Allah could do that. Allah could stop them. <clears throat> Allah has the power to, as soon as you call another God's name in your mouth, to make you dumb. Allah could do that. Allah has the power to do that. As soon as you go to enter into another place of worship, Allah could make you collapse there with a heart attack and die rightly. Allah could do that. But Allah says, Yudillu mayyasha. Allah allows to go astray whoever He wants. Say if a man want, a section of people want to go that way, Allah says, He allows them, He doesn't stop them. Wa yahdi mayyasha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He guides who He wants. Wa yahdi mayyasha. Wa la tus'alunna amma kuntum ta'amaloon. But Allah says, that is not final. Your guidance and misguidance is not final. Because on the day of judgment again, Allah says, you are going to be questioned about what you used to do. You are going to be questioned. Was the angels wouldn't be questioned. Why the angels wouldn't be questioned? Because they do what Allah tells them to do. So there's no need for them to be questioned. All the other creations of Allah except for the Jannats, they just do what Allah tells them to do. So there's no questioning for any of those creations. But us, Allah has granted us that free choice and some are going to choose the right, some are going to choose the wrong. So because of that now Allah says, you'll be questioned. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions you on the day of judgment, then Allah will either, as you know, Allah will either reward you for what good you have done, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for what evil you have done. And the next ayat, which is verse 94, Allah continues again with Oaths and covenants. This is our last ayah that we're going to do tonight. Allah says, And do not take your oath as a means of deceiving one another. Or your feet will slip after they have been formed. Then you will taste the evil consequences of hindering others from the way of Allah. And you will suffer a tremendous punishment. Again, if we look at it in the perspective of addressing the Ahlul Kitab. We will have a better understanding because this is what they did with their covenants. So Allah said, don't take your Ayman, don't take your oaths, don't take your pledges as dakhalam bainakum, as a deception amongst you. Same thing Allah said in the previous ayat. But then Allah give you the example of the woman who, after doing all of that, just letting it go. Allah says, Allah says, if you do that, then your foot is going to slip. Or your feet will slip after it was so formed. Similar parable. You are standing strong hoping, waiting, and now 
as it is there. You use your covenant as a form of deception. And then you slip and you fall. And when you fall, you don't get up again. <clears throat> so Allah says, you slip. So be careful with what you see. So all of this is part of other being just. So you need to also not only be just with your actions, you need to be just with your words. Be just with whatever you see. So you should think before you speak. Many times we speak and then start to think. <clears throat> Always think and then talk. So Allah says, what a do ko so abi ma salatu man sabilillah. Allah says, then you will taste the evil consequences of hindering others from the way of Allah. So, after the Ahlul Kitab realized this last prophet is not going to come from us, they have already slipped because they broke their covenant, they already rejected him. But they did not stay with only rejecting him. They started to propagate the message that he is the false messenger. To stop people from accepting him, even though they know it is the truth. They start to hinder others. Tell people, no, this is not the, the true messenger. You cannot follow him. The true messenger is those messengers in the past, not him. He's a fake. So Allah says, What a doku so abima sadatum. You will taste the evil consequences of you hindering people away from the path of Allah. There was an ayah before where we saw in the fire of Jahannam those who disbelieve and hinder will have double the punishment. They will have one for disbelieving and the second is to preach to others to also follow the wrong path. So here Allah says, you're going to taste the evil consequences, bima salatum and sabilillah. And then Allah ends, Allah says, walakum adabun azim. Allah says, for you will be a tremendous adab, a tremendous punishment. So, <clears throat> again, it is very serious, but with regards to whatever agreement we are going to make, when some, when you want to help someone and you want to make a promise to them, think about it before. Don't just let it come out of your mouth and then realize afterwards, hey, I say this and I can't really keep my word. Try your best to whatever you want to do, whatever agreement you're going to, to give to someone, whatever pact you're going to make, try your best to always upkeep it. Because you don't want to fall into the category of these people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Inshallah with this we have completed verse 94 of Surah Al-Nahal. Inshallah next week we are going to continue with verse 95. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nasakkaruka wa tubi ilayk. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursalim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum.